Hey there. I want to talk briefly about lactate threshold, um, what it is, how you use your Garmin Phoenix 3 or Phoenix 3 HR to measure lactate threshold, and then how you might use lactate threshold in your training. All right, so just a disclaimer, I'm not a, not a scientist. I just researched this shit on the internet. One of the references that I'm going to use is a lactate threshold training paper that was put out by Lynn Kravitz, PhD, and Lance Dalek, PhD, at the University of New Mexico. I'll link to this paper um, in the comments section or in the description section of this video if you want to go read it. Uh, it contains a lot more information than I'm going to be able to provide in this video. But basically, what we're talking about when we talk about lactate threshold, uh, or just a brief description of it um, at rest and under steady state exercise conditions there's a balance between blood lactate production and blood lactate removal so that's at balance uh, the lactate threshold refers to the intensity of exercise at which there's an abrupt increase in blood lactate levels um, when you have that sharp increase in blood lactate levels, there's also a marked in decrease in performance and power. Having a good understanding of your specific lactate threshold will allow you to pick a pace or pick a heart rate that you can run uh, for an extended period of time, run or bike for an extended period of time. If you stay at or below that pace or heart rate, you should be able to um, undertake a significant endurance activity. Uh, for example, a marathon uh, is typically ran at or below um, one's lactate threshold. So the question of today becomes, how do I determine my lactate threshold using my fancy new Garmin Phoenix 3 or Phoenix 3 HR? Um, so um, first off, we're going to go to the settings screen. And then from settings, we're going to go to my stats. Select my stats. We have a recovery advisor, your VO2 max, your race predictor, and your lactate threshold. Your VO2 max and your lactate threshold go into the calculations that will that are going to be used for your race predictor. All right. So for lactate threshold, you select lactate threshold. You can view your lactate threshold, which I took a reading yesterday and received a, a pace of a nine minute mile, nine minute, two second mile, or a heart rate of 171 beats per minute. Um, you can do the guided test and you can also have it set to auto detect. I have a, I have a number of runs on this watch. It's all, my watch has always been set to auto detect. It's never, my watch has never independently reported back a lactate threshold in the absence of doing the test. So you, you have to do the guided test or that's been my experience anyway. So you select the guided test it says 20 to 30 minutes and it's telling me to put on my chest strap for my uh for my real quick this first screen just says warm up 10 minutes there's no other indication so i'm going to start and hopefully in 10 minutes it gives me something else now this says run an additional four minutes i've completed my warm-up it gave me a target heart rate and it disappeared from the screen before i could read it so let's see if i can get back and find what that target heart rate is the screen just automatically switched to a heart rate of, to a measured heart rate of 156. To see if I can find what the target heart rate is, so that I can continue this lactate threshold. Got to updates on my heart rate. Around 150 to 155 seems to be my desired zone. So I just got an update. It says run four minutes at a heart rate of 153 to 163. So I'm gonna try that. All right, next zone. I just got an update to run heart rate zone of 163 to 172. The watch is giving me periodic updates along with color codes and an audible indication of whether I need to speed up or slow down. Blue is speed up, green is good, red is slow down, and then there's a distinct difference in the tones between the three zones. Watch just updated me. My heart rate's 166. My average pace is currently 11.03. So not super fast, but that's not the goal. All right, let's keep going. 
another update. I've just been tasked with running three minutes, heart rate at 172 to 182. Watch just updated that I hit the desired zone. So it's just incrementally going up every three to four minutes to try to figure out where my lactate threshold is and where I'll start to rapidly accumulate fatigue. Just got a five second countdown on the watch. A status screen that said lactate threshold detected, heart rate of 171, cool down recommended. So I'm gonna cool down with a walk and a jog and then I'll go edit this video together for you. So I just looked down on my watch and I had a message to update the heart rate zones um, within my profile using the measured lactate threshold. So I selected yes on that um, and got a confirmation prompt. And then I got a recovery estimator at 34 hours. So in 34 hours, I'll be ready for another workout. Um, the lactate threshold test took me 25 minutes and 51 seconds. I ran 2.39 miles. I burned 296 calories. And my average pace throughout was 10 minutes and 49 seconds per mile. I started my warm up at like a 12 minute mile. And then as it progressed, I steadily worked my way down to around 1030 towards the end or maybe a little bit faster than that um, as I worked my heart rate zone up. So that gives me a target to shoot for in my workouts. Uh, my heart rate zones are now accurate um, within the watch as opposed to, you know, my best guess I'll be able to use the um, indicated heart rate zones of of the uh, blue, green, orange, red. I believe the orange section in the uh, in the heart rate indicator on the watch is, is what they term threshold. I'm going to look up how that relates to lactate threshold and if that's actually the area I need to work out in to improve my lactate threshold. I'll put some information at the beginning of this video to explain what lactate threshold is, how you use it um, in your fitness, what it's for, and what athletes um, measuring and monitoring lactate threshold are uh, appropriate for. Thanks. So I just found this on my achievement screen uh, for the workout I just finished. Uh, the first screen was running VO2 max of 42. And then the next screen was threshold detected, threshold pace nine minutes and two seconds, and then lactate threshold of, uh, that's for heart rate, of 171 beats per minute. Uh, when I run a 5k, my goal is just for me personally to stay under nine minute miles, to stay around 830 miles at the end of that. 5k though, I'm blasted. Uh, fatigue has accumulated and I'm, you know, I'm done for the day and that's kind of my 5k pace. The lactate threshold also goes into um, the calculation of estimated race times. So we'll look at that in a few minutes as well. So looking at the literature to, as it relates to um, training programs designed to increase lactate threshold, it, try not to be cynical here, but it looks a lot like any running training plan that you might have seen in the past, like a couch to 5K or uh, any other typical running plan. It's a mix of tempo runs, um, shorter, fast runs, uh, and then a, a gradual increase in the training volume of about 10% a week, 10 to 10 to 15% a week. Uh, the only thing <clears throat> specific in the uh, training guidance for increasing lactate threshold is they go so far as to define a tempo run as as a run at or near your lactate threshold. And traditionally, tempo runs are referred to, you know, pick a pace that you can comfortably engage in a, in a long run. Um, so this is one step further to say, uh, find your lactate threshold, use that lactate threshold as your tempo run in your standard uh, running training plan, follow that training plan, increase your lactate threshold, you'll be able to go, eventually you'll get to a point where you can go further, faster. 
I hope that I hope this video helped. Uh, if it did, uh, please feel free to like, share, subscribe. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to try and uh, find an answer for you and post it. Thanks. Bye.